Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over a few items and we're going to start with this birdhouse. Now I think this birdhouse was uh, originally intended for indoor use, uh, but it is a heavy wood-ish material. I think it may be pressed wood. Uh, so I'm just going to um, make this over so that it can be used um, my intention is inside on a candlestick, uh, but I'll do some extra uh, clear coat when I'm finished so that uh, it is, um, it will hold it better outside. Again, it's on the small side for that anyway, so I'm assuming that this will be used indoors. Now, usually when I decoupage, I don't use the whole napkin. I just tear some of the, uh, decor or some of the images out of the napkin and decoupage that way but for this one i want full coverage there's some uh, light script in the background and i just like the look of it i like how everything is arranged so i'm just gonna uh, decoupage all four sides of this and even that stoop on the front and because I want some extra protection, I am going to use a Mod Podge, uh, the gloss finish Mod Podge. And then uh, when I do my uh, clear coat in the end, uh, to, if, it, if it ends up being a little too shiny for me, then I can just use a matte finish clear coat and that will take care of that shine. Now here I'm using a sandwich bag, just a wadded up sandwich bag to press that down. Uh, if you haven't tried that, that works really well uh, to uh, get all the, the bubbles and things out of your, your decoupage when you're working with a napkin because you don't want to tear that. And if you try to work it too much with your brush, it's very easy to tear. Now you could use saran wrap if you wanted, but I just keep I just buy those little cheap bags, the pleated bags, not the ones with the zipper, and I just wad one up and just kind of use it that way. Now I mentioned before that if you're trying to save money uh, on your decoupage, napkins are definitely for me the way to go for several reasons, mainly that it is a lot cheaper. But also, um, it decoupages well as long as you're careful not to, um, to work your Mod Podge and brush on it too long. Uh, but also, you have so many options to choose from. If you go on Amazon, there are so many designs. And uh, again, I ordered this one from the Walmart site. And Walmart has a really good selection as well. Not in their store, obviously, but when you order online from Walmart, uh, there are so many to choose from. And I know that there's a lot of other sites as well that will sell napkins uh, just in two or three at a time, sometimes even only one. So when you're ordering from Amazon, always make sure, or Etsy, uh, or actually anywhere that you're ordering your napkins, always make sure of the quantity that you're ordering because a lot of times you'll think that you're only that you're getting a whole pack and you're actually only getting two or three. So just be careful of that because you'll think you're getting a really good deal uh, when when you're actually just buying a few. Now a lot of people like to buy just a few at a time because. Uh, they're not going to use all of them, but because I craft so much, then um, I will use a whole pack, and if not, I can give it to some of my customers that come in. So it, it's a much better value for me just to buy a whole pack. So um, after I finish um, decoupaging this uh, birdhouse, and again, I'm going to do the stoop as well, then... Um, I'm going to paint that roof and I want to use a green that is in one of the other projects that I'll be working on today. So um, I did the roof in the color mint julep and when I painted that on um, 
although I kept my strokes in the same direction, I just um, didn't worry about full coverage because I wanted to see some of that white coming through. Uh, I wanted some dimension in the roof and not just a complete solid color. So um, as you can see here, I'm purposely kind of skipping a little bit and not trying to cover the whole thing. I didn't mention that I took some fine grit sandpaper and sanded it around all of the edges so that it would neaten up that decoupage. And then I sanded some around the edges of this just to give it a little bit more distress. And although I'm liking how this turned out, I may decide to go back and add some Van Dyke Brown glaze to the roof only. I haven't done it at this point. Now I was gifted this little clock and uh, I don't know if it worked or not, but there was a battery in it and the battery acid was coming out. So I just didn't want to risk it. And I just decided to make this over into something besides a clock. So I start out by giving it two coats of the color buttercream. And I love that it's black underneath that way when I go to distress it, I'll have a good dark color to distress down to. So once I get this uh, completely covered with two coats and let it dry well, then I'll just take some fine grit sandpaper and just hit all those high spots and bring out all that detail. And then once I get it uh, distressed the way I want it, uh, then I'm going to take the plastic, it wasn't glass in the front, but I'm going to take the glass, it, plastic rather, and uh, use that to uh, determine the size of the paper that I need uh, to put in this. And I'm going to do a stamp. And I'm just going to put a little scripture stamp on it. And that's going to be used on one side of this. I'm going to make this a two-sided decor. So uh, on one side, uh, it will be a little shadow box of sorts, and the other side will just be a little frame with that scripture in it, and that is my intention on this. So I stamp my scripture on uh, some paper, and, um, and then I cut a square out to fit inside that back uh, because uh, the circle will just kind of fall through if I were to cut just that circle. But as you can see, there in the back is that square, so I just cover that. And I also cut a piece of cardboard to go behind that paper so that I would have a good stiff surface. And, and then the blank side of this, and then I'm gonna decoupage the napkin that I used on the birdhouse uh, just part of that uh, on the blank side of this because that's what's going to be used as my background in the shadow box. And I'm just using regular uh, glue stick here and this purple dries clear so uh, I don't need mu much to hold this on and a glue stick was just easier. And then once I get this uh, covered, then uh, I will glue it right into that um, to that opening there. And the scripture will be on the round side. And then on this back side will be just uh, this napkin. And now because uh, on the scripture side, you're going to see somewhat of a crack around the edges. It needs to be framed out. So I'm using my trim mold here. And uh, this is a redesign with Prima trim mold. And um, I think they're brown now. But uh, this one is the same one. It's just when they were still white is when I ordered, or when my sister ordered this one, actually. So I put some cornstarch in that mold, and I'm using that very top one there because it's very thin, and I just want a really thin border around that. And I'm just using some tight bond, thick and quick, and I glue that all the way around this frame. And then I just go back and very carefully uh, paint 
the mold in that same buttercream color. And then once I got that done and it dried well, then um, I painted the mold while it was wet because they're less likely, likely to crack. Um, but I painted that wet, but then once everything dried well, then, um, then I went over this, the whole thing with a clear coat. And I thought about doing a, a wax of some sort, uh, but I have my detail in the uh, distressing that I did, so I don't need to add any extra to that. And all it needs is just that clear coat. So as you can see, that makes a little piece of framed art on one side and then the other side, because it is indented, uh, I just thought I would make it reversible. Now you see eggs here because I thought about putting eggs in a nest, uh, but I wanted to use this little bird. And this is just one of the birds that I painted that came from uh, the Dollar General. And, um, I wanted to use this on it, but obviously uh, the um, it's not going to be deep enough for that bird. So I thought it would look good if that bird were to just kind of set out front from it. So what I did was I cut a tongue depressor, one of the large tongue depressors, and I'm just going to glue that uh, on the flat bottom, and then uh, I will paint it uh, to match that same buttercream. And here I'm using tight bond, thick and quick, and also hot glue so that I will also get some immediate hold. But you need that tight bond to get your permanent hold. Now you're gonna see very little of this because it's all gonna be covered with uh, some uh, Spanish moss, except for this area that's sticking out, you'll see the sides of it and the bottom of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint just the sides and the bottom in the color buttercream. I don't wanna paint that top at all because I'm gonna be gluing this bird on and I don't wanna to have to wait on that to dry. So I use both the tight bond and the hot glue on that as well to glue that bird in place. But first I need to put my Spanish moss behind it. So I just glue a very small amount uh, in behind that with some hot glue. Uh, this is a, a very small clock, so I don't need much. And then I just glue this bird on its little perch there. And again, you won't even see that perch once it's, uh, when the, once the bird is there. And now I'm just going to add a little bit more d dimension by taking some of a little uh, lavender pick and uh, just cut some little pieces off and I'll glue those to kind of protrude out behind him. And I don't need very much at all of this, so I'll just put a couple of little sprigs on each side. I've mentioned many times that I love clocks. Uh, I especially love old clocks, but most clocks can be turned into something else if it doesn't work. And, um, and it just, it makes really good shadow boxes, I think, or most of them do. And, uh, and there's so many different shapes of clocks that I just really like. So I very seldom pass them up in the thrift stores. I wish I had had more time when I did this video and I would have done a hang tag for this one. Uh, I will be putting one on it before I put it in the store, but for this video I didn't have time to do that. But I just really loved how this turned out. I think it made such a cute little piece. Next I'm going to make over a set of candlesticks. And uh, these had some glass on them, and I'm not sure, I think resin is what they were made from. So once I clean these well, uh, then I'm going to give these a coat of Slick Stick. And that's a product by Dixie Bell that just helps paint stick better to very slick surfaces. So I gave these one coat of the Slick Stick and two coats of the color Buttercream. 
Some of you might would have preferred that clear glass to be left clear, but for me, it doesn't sell well in my store, so uh, I just decided to paint the whole thing and just make it look like it's all one piece. And if you haven't tried Slick Stick, it's a very good product for uh, helping paint stick better. It just makes such a difference uh, in how well your paint sticks. But once I get these covered and it dries well, then uh, I just use uh, some fine grit sandpaper. Uh, I tried to do some wet distressing here and it was just going to take too long. So I ended up using that same fine grit sandpaper and, uh, and distressed these. And then once I got them distressed the way I wanted, then I finished these off with a clear finish. And that's all that I did to these. And the next item that I'm going to make over is a shadow box. And this was already a shadow box. I just wanted to, to um, put some things in it, obviously. And I wanted to, although I love that green, I'm going to use some Van Dyke Brown Glaze on that and just tone it down a little bit, which is one of the reasons why I'll probably be doing that to that birdhouse. Now, I made a big mistake with this, and I do it all the time, and I don't know when I'll ever learn, uh, but when I put this back together, it had a hanger on the back, and um, I put it together upside down, and I did it in a way that it can't be changed, so I'm just gonna have to take that hanger off the back and redo it. And I don't know if you guys do that, but I do uh, entirely too much. So again, this is already the way I want it. I just wanna tone it down a little bit with this brown glaze. So you just brush that on and take a cloth and wipe it, wipe it away. And if, if you're afraid of it being too dark, uh, using a clear finish first, whether it be a clear wax or a clear spray, uh, will help it w wipe off easier. But this wasn't a really matte finish, uh, so I knew that it wouldn't grab too much. And I, I wanted to make sure to get enough to tone it down. I was careful when I brushed it on that front not to get too much on my brush because if you get too much on your brush, uh, then you'll have so much brown down in all the detail when you have a lot of detail like this. And so, uh, again, I was really careful to not put too much on my brush. But I did want to work what I did have on my brush down in all that detail well before I wiped it off. But I really like the amount of green that I had left and the shade of green that I had left uh, after I did this. So I was really happy that I used that. And I was uh, very happy that this was already a shadow box so it makes it a very easy makeover. And, and now it's just a matter of what I want to put inside it. And I love bird decor, so you might have guessed this is going to get some bird decor inside it as well. But it needed a background, so what I'm going to put in the background is an image that I got from the Graphics Fairy. And uh, I don't know if you guys ever go to the Graphics Fairy, but it is such a good resource for free clip art. And um, there's obviously a lot of things that they sell on there, and uh, you get those if you're uh, if you buy a membership, which I don't have because there's so much on there that is free uh, that. I just don't feel the need to pay that monthly charge. And I, I have definitely been tempted many times to join because there is so, so much more if you are a member. But uh, for now, I think I'm just going to use what they offer for free. And, um, and this bird image is one of them. So I just uh, printed my image out on some cardstock, and that's what will be my background. So I just cut this image to fit and glued it on, 
and I made sure that the birds were up toward the top and I left my empty spot toward the bottom because I'm going to be adding some decor down there so all that's going to be covered and I wanted to make sure that it, I didn't cover my birds. So I just cut that to fit and glued it on with my glue stick and then it was ready for the decor inside. And I just love this little neutral image because it will go with so many colors and then you can add your color in the frame or in the other decor inside. So I'm just going to take some Spanish moss and build uh, somewhat of a makeshift nest. I'm really not even going to shape it much like a nest. I'm just going to put uh, some of that Spanish moss in the bottom and uh, I just kind of press it down in the center enough to where I'll be able to add my eggs. Uh, but I don't worry with doing any, uh, adding any glue to this so that I can mold it into a nest because it's just all going to be glued onto uh, that paper. And then I'm going to add some of, uh, some little bits of a lavender pick and add some height down the side. And I'll just add all that with hot glue. So I just kept adding my little floral pieces until uh, I was happy with the look and it didn't need very much at all because I want to kind of keep this natural. I don't want to do so much that it takes too much away from those birds. And then I just put the glass on and put my frame back on. And when I started putting my frame back on, uh, I thought to check the direction that I had put my paper on and that's when I realized that I messed up. Uh, but now is when I'm realizing that I think I can fix that without having to put another hanger on it because um, it uh, was glued on with a glue stick um, I don't think that it will hold so tightly that I can't just pull that whole thing off of the back and turn it around and glue it again. Because that would be so much easier than having to put another hanger on it. But I really like how this one turned out. I wanted to take a minute and thank you guys uh, for your support, all your very sweet comments, and uh, for watching my videos, and the friendships that I formed with so many of you. You just will never know how deeply I appreciate that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.